All right, folks, welcome back to the channel. So we're going to talk about real quick some um, using some fund flow analysis, looking at ETFs, just kind of looking at where the market is right now. Of course, this is not financial advice. Uh, call your financial advisor, schedule an appointment with one, um, so on and so forth. Go ahead and make an analysis of the fear and greed cycle. OK, we're going to go through that. We're going to talk about that, though, and show how you can use fund flow analysis to go ahead and see where money is starting to go. But I have kind of a thesis that I want to do with the video. So we're going to look at this information from here from Porter Stansberry, uh, looking at uh, the banking system, looking at Warren Buffett's sales that he's been doing. Uh, in addition to um, that, we look at Warren, excuse me, looking at uh, Ray Dalio. So, you know, Ray Dalio is large hedge fund, largest hedge fund manager. So really quick, just looking at this post that Porter Stansberry put up on uh, October 19th. So right here, why is silver soaring? The banks are in trouble. These details are public. Berkshire, Berkshire sold 260 million shares of Bank of America at $41 for proceeds of 10 billion, but Berkshire still owns more than 30 billion worth of Bank of America, probably not for long. Here's here's what's not um, here's what's not public yet. So you gotta remember too, he owns over 10%. Once he goes under the 10% threshold of that company, then he doesn't have to report those sales anymore, which he would probably obviously wait to do that because he doesn't wanna incite panic and mess up his own sale. Uh, sell out of that stock but just look at this post right here look what he's talking about it's really key information so going down right here uh berkshire has also sold all of its commercial banks except city since nearly since early 2020 sold 100 percent of its 346 million shares and uh wells fargo sold 100 percent of its 150 million shares in usb uh and you know that's the bank that took over credit suisse and sold 100% of its 60 million shares in JP Morgan, sold 100%, 100% of its 12 million shares in Goldman Sachs, right? So you should ask yourself, like, what's going on? Why is Warren Buffett selling out of all of these major banks, right? Now, if you remember the global financial crisis 2008, he had a he had like a preferred share, or was it, it was like a hybrid of like a preferred share and preferred note where he lent money to Goldman Sachs and he was guaranteed like some crazy percent, like 9% or something like that. Or, or maybe it was like 7%. But whatever it was, it, I, I remember it being very high and it was a guaranteed rate, right? Basically, it was because Goldman Sachs was getting bailed out by the Fed, right? But we want to look at how can you make this information useful to you? That Learning all this stuff is great, right? But how do you make the information useful to you? Okay, so you have Warren Buffett, financial legend selling out of bank stocks right bank stocks are the engines pretty much of the economy like when you look start looking at bank stock if bank stocks start to do really really bad it's probably gonna have you're probably in a bad economy or you're about to turn into one me personally i think the economy is doing a lot worse than what they're telling us on the news um like i said as a, as a former stock broker you don't find out this information on the news. Like I wasn't looking at the news. If you're if you're getting news, your best source of news is going to be to read the news because there's going to be a lot more details in reading the news than just looking at a headline or tag things to get your attention and keep your attention on 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 the video news. But let's go deep. Let's dig into this. So what is the current fear and greed index? So if you know the fear and greed index, that's something that's published by CNN. Okay, right now it's saying that we're in a period of greed. It's at seventy three. Right. So. Um, we're getting in close to the portion though, where it could go into extreme greed. I think that's what maybe like 80%. So you can see we're pretty close to leaving greed and going into extreme greed, right? And of course, as you can see, this is the S&P 500 and a 21 day moving average, 125 day moving average. You can see the S&P has gone up and up and up and up and up. So people are comfortable with the markets going up, right? But are they going to get a signal when it's turning to, ready to turn down? That's the question you need to answer, right? So we look at this chart. So this is a Murray Asset Mutual Fund. Not endorsing them, just I like the, the chart that they had. So here's the greed buy and the fear sell, okay? So basically, this is a distribution channel. 
So you have the optimism, enthusiasm, exuberance, euphoria, anxiety, denial, fear, despair, panic, capitulation, discouragement, dismay, hope, relief, optimism. Back starting the chain. Okay. Now, where would you guess that we're at right now? Understanding what you know about the economy or what you're seeing in the economy from your viewpoint. My viewpoint is that we're at a period of denial. So we've already hit the bend. We've already been in euphoria because we've already been in this market. We've been used to going up, 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 up and up, right? So we're comfortable right now. Of course, this is just going 2003, but even if you go back another year, still been comfortable, right? But I wholly believe that we are in denial right now, right? So as you can see, this is the top of the bend, right? This is the four cycle top of the bend. As you go down, you'll go into fear, right? That's the next stage right now. I think we are definitely in denial. Here's some of the indication of that, right? So looking at gold as a metric, right? So we know gold is where the safe haven is, right? Even though we know sometimes in periods, periods of the economy, just because you go into it doesn't mean that you're going to be safe, okay, from all your assets because it may not grow as much as you want. But essentially what you're doing, you're trying to do is to, to mitigate the losses, right? So I want to look at the flows, okay? So this is a pay subscription. So you have to pay in order to see this information. There is a free 14-day trial, but you do have to pay to see this fund flow information, right? But you want to know where money is going, right? That's one of the key determinants where I don't care what the news says, you need to follow where the money is going. Once you can see where the money is going and you can dictate a pattern, you can see a trend, you say, okay, I see what's happening right now, right? So I'm using Warren Buffett as a proxy for the larger market because bank stocks are very representative of where the economy is going, right? Depending on the bullishness or bearishness of that cycle or excuse me, of that sector. So when you look on here, look at, so this is the large, this is the, the largest gold uh, fund that's out there. This is the Spiders Gold Shares of GLD, right? And then you have the iShares Silver Trust uh, the iShares Gold Trust, right? So silver and gold, right? I'm going to focus on silver just because silver, I like to say, is the uh, poor man's gold, right? And a lot of people have the uh, opportunity to purchase silver because silver is at, at a much cheaper price than gold right now. So silver is at about $34 an ounce. So that's a lot cheaper. That's a lot more affordable than gold is, right? Because gold is, you know, $2,700 an ounce. You know, we're hitting new time, new all-time highs for gold. We we are not at all time highs for for silver. Uh, we're still about uh, eight or nine dollars off of that. OK, but look at look at where the money is going. So this is the last four weeks. So all these are in fund flows in millions of dollars. Right. So what you see right here is. Seven hundred and seventy eight million dollars in the last four weeks has gone in net. OK, net of money that has come out of the fund. So it's net brought in 778 million into this gold share. Now, if you look at the silver one, half a billion, right? So 505 million. And these are all silver and gold. So these are ETF fund flows for uh, precious metal ETFs, okay? But the highest clearly are the two gold and the silver. But like I said, I want to focus on silver because a lot of people can actually afford to buy silver at $30 an ounce, right? It's so much more affordable if you want to actually own physical silver, which I encourage everybody to do, okay? So, um, you know, for example, this buffalo head, okay? You can see right here, buffalo head. That right there, you can get at probably a little bit over spot, maybe cost you about $35. You can buy it an ounce, right? They come in these packages, okay? Or little boxes that you can get, or I don't know, container, right? But that's a that's a ounce of silver. That's lawful money. That's Article 1, Section 10 money, right? That's lawful money, or what Robert Kiyosaki likes to say, say God's money, right? Because it's actual physical, it's natural. But you wanna look at this fund flow Okay, so you have a massive amount of funds flowing into it. Now, as you can see, of course, silver 
has gone up. Okay, this is a weekly chart. Okay, going back to the beginning of 2024. So as you can see, silver ramped up, took a pause, plateau, hit a trough, and now it's back going back up. Okay. Now, if we look at a longer time frame, so we can pull up a five years. So this is stockcharts.com. This is a free service, right? So you can look at this for free. They do have a paid service. Um, I'll probably be adding that to one <laughs> of my many paid services that I'll be accumulating uh, through the course of this. It just it takes it takes a lot of money. Uh, like I said in some of my other videos, you know, you're gonna be spending me personally probably be spending you know close to three hundred dollars, two and three hundred dollars a month, um, and uh, subscriptions to different services, right? Because that's what you need in order to get this information. Um, but this portion is free, so if you can see going back here it says in 2020 it was at a low 14 dollars. now i was telling people you know buy you some silver it's cheap it's cheap it's cheap not very many people listen and then it shot up then went sideways shot up sideways shot up and people i mean you know friends and family close associates and stuff not financial advice for you but this is a way for uh because i don't know your your situation maybe you already own a bunch of silver and you, you don't need to allocate any more to that i don't know but when you're looking at it, okay, silver is taking a tune up. Now, here's the silver ETF list, okay? So the silver I share trust, so one, two, three, four, five. This is the fund flows. So this is, again, we're showing how much has gone in over the last uh, four weeks. Now, as you see this one is a negative and you're like, oh, what's going on with that one? Well, think about it. This is a pro ultra short. This is a pro shares ultra short. So it's betting that silver will go down. So that means that money has been coming out of that because people believe, okay, that this is not going to go well, right? Because this pro ultra short, that's betting on the price of silver going down, right? So it's current most recent price is seven dollars and ninety seven cents and it's down uh one point six percent for the day okay so this is as of october uh nineteenth okay and let's go back so what we want to really look at is okay if we're in a fear and greed and we're in extreme greed and you feel that we're in this bend right here. We're somewhere right here because the uh, the economy has not been doing that well in terms of jobs. If you look at anything in terms of jobs, the jobs numbers, the restated or the revised, not the not the headline. Don't look at the BLS's headlines now because we know they're not trustworthy. We know they're being politically manipulated and motivated to make things look better than they really are. But when they give the revisions that's where we see the huge downfalls in how inflation is and how jobs numbers are those revisions are telling everything but they're they're releasing the headline to make things look good why because it's a political year right so you have to be very naive if you think that that information is not being manipulated okay we don't have any proof of it but we're talking about revisions that are significantly, significantly in opposition to what they are initially being released at, right? So it, has, it becomes very questionable, okay? We know we're in a very polarizing area right now. Um, I just wanted to share that information though with you. Again, like you said, you have people pulling money out, um, Ray Dalio's pulling money out, and Bank of America, um, and, and JP Morgan, some of these other banks, you know, the money that they have sitting in their coffers that are held to maturity for debts that are held to maturity debts, even though they're not being called on all of that, doesn't matter. Right now, the hold to maturity, that money that they're holding, the exposure that they have, they can get rid of it via a quantitative easing program from from the fed and they can get rid of it without causing inflation that's the other thing if you if you're familiar with richard a werner professor richard a werner he goes over how 
they can get rid of this debt in many instances in many other videos older videos and even more recent videos they can go ahead and the fed can buy those securities that they're at risk at so you know when you look at it look at where porter stansberry shown right here he's showing uh, for example, I'm not going to go through all of them, but UBS, okay, 99.9% .9 of their securities are, are hold to maturity with implied losses at currently $1.4 And basically he's saying that they are not marking them to market. In most cases, if they mark them to market, they're going to have to sell them for less than what they are on the book value, okay? None of this looks good. Okay, none of this goes without the Federal Reserve getting involved, stepping in and buying some of these securities in the end. Mark my words. I can't wait to see this stuff at the end and I'm going to bring this video up. But it's the same thing, you guys. I'm seeing the same vibes, 2008 vibes all over again. I was a stockbroker during that, that period of time. 2007, 2008, 2009, 2011, uh, 2009, 2010, 2011, 2012. I took a break from the industry and I came back into the securities industry. But during that time, I'm telling you, it's the same vibes. So watch out. The consume the Michigan's consumer index don't pay attention to that. That that is a very small sample of people that is pulling from is no way. I mean, you could probably get a better poll if you did it on uh X, aka Twitter, okay? If Elon Musk did a poll on how people feel about the economy every month. Now, of course, he's, there's a bunch of bots in there too, but you probably have more people that would, you'd probably have a better survey done on there because you'd have a wider sample. You'd have a broader sample. Okay. So anyway, those are just my thoughts. Felt it was necessary to make this video just because I know a lot of people don't, um, don't understand how impactful this is and getting ahead of the curve is just understanding that maybe we're actually in denial right now and that maybe the reason you have Warren Buffett selling out of all of these companies, these bank companies, is because the banks are going to be in trouble. And what he's going to do is he's going to lend them money. And he's going to buy preferred securities and notes and a quasi government bailout because the Federal Reserve, even though it's not government, the government will step in and say, hey, we need some help. And the government will put in money taking tax dollars and the Federal Reserve being a private corporation will go ahead and work in tandem with the government, right? But it's a reason why he's selling all those bank stocks. Don't let that be lost.